Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is the Fortress of Dyke Jump Jump, sent in by Alex GG on the Discord. If you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a look at on this show, you can do that via my Discord server. There's a link down in the description. Simply go to the DF Save sharing room and jump in and upload your save file, as other has, others have done before. Of course, if you attach some screenshots, that will, uh, of course, increase your likelihood of getting featured. And I would like to also note that we currently have a contest going on. It is a DF uh, Mayor's Office Complex Design Contest, which which currently is open for entrance. That is also taking place on my Discord, and there is a video on this YouTube channel explaining the rules. All that being said, there's one more thing I would like to state before we dive into this fortress, and that's if you've been watching this channel for a while and you've noticed that the very, very, very long live stream archives have vanished from this channel, that's because they've moved to the Blind Extras channel. There's also a link to that in the description of this video. Now, let's dive into this fortress. So this is the fortress of Dyke Jump, of the Oars of Scarring, of the Simple Manor. Now, this fortress has one hell of an entrance. Uh, something that I'm going to point out immediately is, um, look at this. We've got uh, somebody sharing many tales from beyond Dyke Jumped. That's always exciting. But uh, we got a lot of forbidden stuff chopped down here. So I'm assuming that there's been some, like, either invasions or something that's uh, forced them to need to... Um, you know, spot uh, stuff because um, there, there's a lot of stuff that's forbidden in here. And I would just like to show you a really cool life hack tool, um, this button right here. So if you, if you click on this, you can actually make items invisible. So if you're not planning on getting these out of here, just make them go away and then things look a lot cleaner. Um, that being said, all of these statues and things out here, I assume that these are planned to at some point be moved out and maybe they're just moving them out later. I would recommend just placing a bunch of um, masonry shops everywhere and just get them making blocks because you do have these stone workers workshops, which is what I'm referring to, old habits die hard. These stone workers shops could just be making blocks. Blocks go into bins and blocks will save you a lot of space and then you won't have, you know, these little bricks just and boulders lying everywhere and things will just be a lot cleaner. All that being said, though, this is the entrance to our fortress, which kind of goes into the side of this mountain with a kind of a river running down the middle of it, or rather a creek. There's this drawbridge that, of course, blocks you from the entryway. And right upon moving into the entrance, if I hit Z, we can see our zones. Uh, up here, we have an area for archers to fire. I wonder if they actually can fire through that. I'd love to know. And uh, then up here, we have uh, these two unnamed barrackses, of course, still full of boulders. Um, these two unnamed barrackses uh, don't actually have... Uh, uh, or rather, I, th I thought it said it didn't have any squads assigned. They do have one squad assigned to each one, and it's a spot for them to sleep. If we move down, there's an interesting um, pattern of floor hatches there. I guess it's to restrict traffic. Um, not totally sure why that exists, but we can move down into here where dwarves are forced to walk through this uh, waterfall, quite literally, like a full-on waterfall, which seems kind of like a lot. I mean... Um, this is almost surprise insta drowning than more so that than an actual mist generator. What I would recommend for a mist generator like this is, uh, have the water fall through right here and then maybe put like some barricades right or not barricades, uh, fortifications right here, similar to here, uh, in front of it and then have them walk past it. Uh, because right now there's like a 50, 50 chance they're going to get hit by like more than three of seven water, which is going to block pathing, and that's going to cause you some nightmares for dwarves actually running around. Like, I'm going to let the fort run for a little bit. I'm curious what frame rate it's running at, but it feels pretty slow. Um, regardless, that being said, um, I, this is not something I would recommend. Granted, it will clean your dwarves off if they have any blood on their clothes and whatnot, but uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the fortress is running at like 17 frames per second right here, so if you're wondering as to why your, your frames are so low, this is the sort of thing that's going to kind of impact that because they're going to want to path around those. So they're constantly recalculating how to get through and into this dining hall. Now, this dining hall is very, very, very well put together, very pretty looking. And I love how there there obviously was some sort of plan at some point to bring the waterfall in through this way. But it seems to have failed um, or something because, um, well, it clearly doesn't actually go in that way. Um, if we move up one layer, you can see that there's some levers and some various things scattered about. I'm not sure the purpose of any of that. We do have some wells right here, which are very nice and accessible. Much appreciate that. Uh, or the dwarves probably definitely appreciate that. And then these beautiful large bedrooms. I love that everybody has their own table as well as their own chest. And uh, uh, Shortast here, who has this dwarf, dwarven bedroom, really likes their yak meat because look at that. They've, just, they've got two of them on the ground. Uh, as we move up a little bit here, uh, more bedrooms and they get nicer towards the top. So outpost liaisons here and as well as wait, hold on. Do you have 
Two outpost liaisons or... No, you have one. Why does the outpost liaison have two bedrooms? Oh, because this one's an office. Duh. I thought I saw a bed in there. Uh, and then up here we have um, our the, the rest of the stuff for the outpost liaison. So uh, all of their... Uh, needs and wants right here. We got their tomb, their dining hall, and their office all in one spot, as well as their bedroom chamber. I do like the uh, little window into the artifact room. Um, I would have put bars there instead of uh, the wall, so I would have done iron bars instead of the wall, but that's just me. And uh, I personally would have put the table and chair down here and the, uh, the what would what, you call it, uh, the bookshelf and the cabinet up here, just because it looks like the bookshelf's facing the wall. And to me, I think the bookshelf at the top of the room looks better than the bookshelf, bookshelf at the bottom of the room. This is all semantics. It doesn't matter. I've just been thinking about these things recently because we are currently doing that mayor's setup uh, design contest. Over here, we have a dormitory as, as well as a tiny meeting area with a trapdoor in the middle of it, inconspicuously. And then we have this little locked room here, uh, full of artifacts and our hospital. I was going to say our hospital, but this is a set up as an office, so I'm not... And we do have a dwarf that's haggard and unconscious. Is, is there an office and a hospital here? I... Hmm. Well, I hope that dwarf gets tended to at some point, Cole. You poor thing. Um, and then we can continue scrolling around, and we have this very large uh, spot full of food. But then we get to one of the other kind of prizes of this fortress. So the lower layer is just another set of bedrooms. <clears throat> and then up at the top here, some unassigned uh, zones as well. Um, or rather, not unassigned zones. I thought I hit that button. Up here is the, the stuff for the dungeon master and uh, other dwarves of importance. But then we get this zone. Now, this is just a giant meeting area that's not assigned to anything. I was kind of expecting it to be a temple when I first saw it, but it has these holes in the floor that go down to here. And it starts off with the king's tomb, followed by the king and queen's throne room, followed by a meeting area, followed by their office, so like, uh, I guess this is technically their throne room. And then if we move up one more layer, the king and queen's bedroom. And I gotta say, I love this, like, lava setup here. It's absolutely lovely to look at, but you still gotta deal with this boulder problem. Um, I, I would... Excuse me? Bim? The Baron of uh, Fence Skulls? What exactly are you doing? Right there. I'm sure he'll be fine. Um, anyway, so as we uh, continue moving, uh, we also have this kind of area right here. Now, this is another one of the like kind of prized zones of this fortress. So right to the left of all of these workshops here, just above these mass, <laughs> and I do mean massive, uh, stockpile zones, um, a few layers up, we have this huge furniture zone, followed by this huge boulder zone, followed by all of this. Uh, we really need to tell you the good word of wheelbarrows, by the way, friend. I know that you've got three in here, but like you need like 30. Um, and then up here, we have this stockpile zone. Over here on the left, we have this kind of walkway. Now this walkway leads down into a pretty peculiar little thing, um, which I'm not totally sure what it is, but it's this pretty peculiar little thing that uh, is powered by something that leads down into here. And uh, these are, um, well, dwarves that are... Uh, Stepping on, uh, you know, uh, the pressure plates and they're patrolling. They're set to patrol. And, um, this is causing these to open and shut, um, which is spraying water down into here, which is filling down here, which, um, is then pumped back out, I think. Um, I'm not sure the purpose of any of this mess. Um, it says that they're set to play, but I kind of see it as they're just lowering the frame rate. I mean, you do you, really, at the end of the day, but I, I don't see the purpose of any of this. It looks cool, but I don't really understand it. All that being said, let's see how far down this fortress goes. So as we move over to here, we can see that there's power coming from various places, and I'm curious as to where this power is coming from. It, uh, it appears to, uh not uh, to go up 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 to these water wheels here ah where the water is flowing off well kind of back in and out of the map and there's a an elf stuck i'm sure they're fine and uh, these water wheels are spinning i didn't realize they'd spin at this angle i always thought they had to be facing the direction the water's flowing i just learned something that's fascinating um and then if we scroll down we can see that this is actually an open uh walkway which means it's very dangerous but let's see where what direction this fortress goes so we get down through these massive mining zones down here with even more stockpiles um this is one of those fortresses that very much suffers from 
uh, too much stuff disorder where it would probably be much better off if there was just less things in the fortress. Um, but then we can move down, we can move down, we can move down, we can move down through the cavern layers and down to these marked stairways. Um, and then here is our reservoir uh, for lava, which, you know, they, they did probably, I would assume, by just channeling out this top bit and then digging out this and then letting it flow in. Uh, and then it filled up this square, which is then being pumped up through these pumps in this pump stack, which then go all the way up to here on the side and across into our fortress. And if we go up a little bit more, we can see that that pump stack is powered by windmills. Um, although those are some of the most precarious windmills I've ever seen, they look really cool. And then this tower here kind of goes all the way up to this walkway where, you know, you can get to those windmills. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you would like to see more featured fortresses, there's a ton of them on this YouTube channel, and uh, frankly, it's quite the chunky playlist to work your way through. Once again, I would like to note that if you are, uh, if you've been watching this channel for some time and you're wondering where those really long archives have gone, check out the uh, channel down in the description, Blind Extras. That is where all my VODs from my streams are going to be going from now forward. Uh, this is a very interesting, if not laggy, fortress, and uh, I really like some designs and uh, have questions about others. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.